Do you ever wonder how your dryer knows when the laundry is done? The obvious answer is to use a moisture sensor, and if you have a modern dryer with these metal strips that require cleaning, you'd be right. But today we're looking at the other method that's an old school example of simple, effective, and elegant engineering. For this demonstration, we'll need to collect some temperature data. I'm gonna hook up this fluke to record the air temperature inside the dryer basket throughout all these tests. I think it's best if we start by looking at the timed setting. I call this the dumb mode. Now, before we run the cycle, let's familiarize ourselves with how this thing is wired to better understand the data we'll capture. The dryer came with these detailed wiring diagrams that are pretty interesting, but for the purpose of this video, we can simplify the schematic. There are five components we're gonna focus on. There's AC line voltage, there's a heating element used to create the hot air. We have a thermal switch inside the dryer basket used to cycle the heating element on and off. There's a small motor that advances the knob and a master on off switch that kills power to everything. Now I'll set the knob for 30 minutes and explain how this circuit will work. When we complete the circuit by hitting the start button, several things will happen. The knob motor will begin slowly advancing the knob at a constant speed back towards the off position. And since the laundry is cold, the thermal switch will begin closed, causing the heating element to turn on. Once the inside air temperature reaches 150 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermal switch will open, causing the heating element to turn off. Once the air cools back down to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermal switch will close again, and this cycle repeats until the knob reaches cool down, at which point the heating element stays off. Once the knob hits the off position, the main switch opens, the buzzer sounds, and the cycle is complete. Let's toss in a towel straight from the washer and begin our first test. Here we'll plot the temperature data of this dumb timed cycle. You'll notice the knob continuously advances towards off while the heating element cycles between the upper and lower trip points of the temperature switch. The heating element continues to cycle on and off until the knob reaches cool down, at which point the heater stays off until it reaches the end of the cycle after 30 minutes and the buzzer sounds. Let's check the towel. All right, it's still damp. Clearly 30 minutes wasn't long enough for one towel. Let's run this through a rinse and spin cycle again so we can run that exact same test, but this time in auto dry mode. While we wait, let's check out this schematic again. This time we're gonna move the knob into the auto dry zone. And here's the amazing part, so pay attention. With the knob in this position, there's only one change to the schematic. This connection to the knob motor moves from here to the bottom of the heating element. That's it. So let's look at how this one change will affect the operation. Just as before, we'll complete the circuit by closing the start button. And again, the temperature switch will begin closed, causing the heating element to turn on. But now look at the path of this new connection. When the heating element is on, the motor has zero volts across it, which keeps the knob from turning. But once the thermal switch gets hot enough to open, we can see the magic. The heating element will turn off, but the motor will now see line voltage through the heating element. Since the heating element is basically just a long piece of coiled wire, it'll happily pass the tiny amount of current required to run the motor. So in auto dry mode, the knob only advances when the heating element is off and stops turning when the heating element is on. This cycle repeats over and over. When the heating element turns off, the knob starts again. When the heating element turns on, the knob stops. Once the knob reaches cooldown, the heater stays off, so the knob continuously advances until the buzzer sounds and the master switch opens, ending the cycle. To help us understand how this method manages to end the cycle just when the clothes get dry, we'll run successively larger loads through the auto dry mode and analyze the results. We'll start with this one towel again. So this chart will look basically the same as the previous test in the dumb timed mode, but watch the knob closely. Notice it only turns when the temperature is falling because the heating element is off. This small load heats up quickly, so we end up with a lot of on-off cycles, allowing the knob to spin fairly frequently. Notice the knob reaches off after 39 minutes, about 10 minutes longer than our dumb test. Let's see if that extra nine minutes helped the towel get dry. Lo and behold, the laundry is dry. This time I'll rinse and spin two towels to help us better understand what's going on here. Then we'll run both of them through an auto dry cycle with the knob at the exact same starting position as before. I'll keep the one towel graph in the background to make it easier to compare. If we pause it here, we can already see that two towels took longer to reach the upper temperature limit than one towel. This makes sense because the same heating element is trying to evaporate a higher moisture content inside the basket. Now, if we let the cycle finish, again, we'll see the knob only advances when the heating element switches off. 
because the heating element has to stay on longer with two towels before reaching the upper temperature limit each time, we can see that the knob advances less frequently than before, causing this cycle to take 49 minutes, about 10 minutes longer than one towel in auto dry. Just as before, the towels are dry. Now let's rinse and spin all three towels. This will be our final test and should really help illustrate the elegance of this design. What you'll want to notice with this final test is just how long it takes the three towels to heat up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, over 20 minutes before the knob first moved. Now you can clearly see that this method ensures that even a hypothetically gigantic load that takes ages to heat up will spend enough time drying because the knob physically can't move until the basket has reached its maximum operating temperature, and only then will the knob begin inching towards the buzzer to end the cycle. It's brilliant. As you can see, this final test took over an hour for the buzzer to sound. Now to really drive the point home, let's take a look at the knob side by side for one towel, two towels, and three towels. They all begin at the same starting point, but we can see the load with one towel immediately heats up and begins to advance the knob. The load with two towels follows shortly behind, while the load with three towels struggles to reach its upper temperature limit due to the higher moisture content resisting the temperature change and begins to advance its knob last. We see the cycle with one towel finishes first at 39 minutes. The cycle with two towels finishes 10 minutes later at 49 minutes. While the cycle with three towels is just now entering the cooldown phase and finishes last at an hour and four minutes. Now, if you're anything like me and find this kind of stuff as fascinating as I do, consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be releasing more content on other interesting topics regularly.